Hey there, and welcome to Game Points episode 102, our weekly little get together where we talk about the past week in gaming news. I am, as always, your host, Stephen Brown. Joining me today is. I'm David. Uh, a little bit of Scottish in there with you. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, no problem. Uh, tonight, we are going to discuss Darkwood devs putting their game up for free. We're going to get into Sony, Microsoft, or Microsoft talking to Sony about crossplay, some weird Bethesda Game of Thrones rumors. Uh, it's going to be an interesting Nonsense. show, for sure. Uh, if you happen to be joining us live, by the way, here at twitch.tv slash gamepoints, feel free to do, join in the chat. We do try to get to you whenever we can. If you're watching us on YouTube, comment down below, and we try to answer you when we can there as well. Uh, David, before we get yeah. into any of the big news this week, there's one thing I want to ask. And that is, is this crass? Now... What you're seeing on the screen here, what you can't see right now, David, is a joint partnership between Totino's Pizza Rolls and Middle <laughs> Earth Shadow of War. <laughs> it's just, I love every minute of it. It's so good. Doesn't um, this, doesn't this well, feel even more crass than normal, right? No, dude, it's perfect. Because, okay, okay well, we got to go back. So, Call of Duty already has the market on Doritos and Mountain Dew, right. which are, like, the definitive gamer snacks, according to most of the internet. Right. A fucking diva eats Doritos and Mountain Dew. Um, and then you have the Destiny Rockstar, because obviously they can't jump on the Mountain Dew bandwagon, but they still need some kind of energy drink. And then there was Pop-Tarts. And we talked about the fact that Pop-Tarts were fucking absurd, and that made no damn sense. So, yeah, Shadow of War... It's not like they're going to get any of that Red Bull money, so let's go hit up Totina's Pizza Rolls, the thing that gamers love to stuff in their face. So this is... this At this, least some of them. This particular campaign has people pissed off a little bit more than normal for some reason, and I'm trying to pin down exactly why, because like you said, it's not like this is anything different than we've seen so far. It's not that unusual. No. However, there is one major kicker to this story. What okay. is that? Dude? Who's behind it? Because we're not talking about Activision, we're not talking about Bethesda or any other company that people sometimes like. We're talking about the WB and the Damn fact frog. that their like <laughs> entire series of releases for quite a while have been a shit show, and they're just loving those Michael transactions and buggy games and just being dicks, which is kind of exemplified by their plan for Shadow of War. And the That's, fact that that game has pay to win style bullshit yeah. in it. Uh, Confirmed it, by the fucking developers, people. Pay money to get in-game weapons yeah. so you can do better in a competitive mode. That's pay to win. Fucking this is w. definitely amplified uh, by the fact of the loot boxes found in Shadow of War. Uh for and sure. loot boxes I that go that's... well beyond traditional cosmetic items, which there is even a case to be made that says you shouldn't even be having to pay for a game that even has that in there. A little bit extreme, in my opinion, but I can listen to that argument. This right here is... It, it's all... It's it's this one giant package, right? Like, for example, if Tortino's Pizza Rolls was sponsoring... Uh, what's a big game? It's XCOM. That comes out. Or Mario vs. Rabbids had Tortino Pizza Rolls. <laughs> Perfect. I don't think any of us would really care. No, nah, dude. That plumber likes those little tasty Italian bites. Little but pizza. the fact that all the other bullshit you mentioned, the pay-to-win microtransactions, the aggressive season pass pushing, Warner Brothers' previous piss-poor track history, especially when it comes to PC ports. I was going to say, every single PC release they've yeah. had for the last three uh, years. Mortal Kombat 10 and Arkham... Night and Origins, both come up, uh, all three come to mind. I think this is just one of those. It, it's definitely making this whole thing amplified as far as the hate goes. Yeah, I'll believe that. People are people are extra mad just because it's WB. Um, it's a weird tie-in that Totino's, the guys that make the tiny pizzas and also pizza rolls, are getting behind a, a video game for like cross promotional coverage. That's well, strange, but. There's how, how is it any more so strange I'm not, than... I'm not really weirded out by that, because Totinos okay. wants some of that video game money. They don't give a shit. But how is it They're any just... more different strange than Doritos or Mountain Dew or that, Rock, well, I mean, Red that's, Star? That's Red, what I'm Rock, saying. Rock the Star only and Red thing Bull. that makes it a little strange is that it's a different company coming into the fold, but 
they make snack food, so it's not that fucking weird. Yeah, it's like the Hot Pockets thing. It wasn't Hot Pockets involved in a game not all that long ago. Uh, who knows, dude? I could have sworn Hot kinds... Pockets and Halo had something to go. I could be wrong on that. Hot Halo Pockets. Halo Pockets. Excellent. Uh, but yeah, WB. General shittiness. The internet's still mad at them, and so, they're going to take it out on anything WB related, including Totino's Shadow of War fucking cross promotions. So it, it, I think we're in agreement. This is crass, but no more so than anything else that any other company would do. The only reason why people are a bit more up in arms about this than they normally would be is because of WB. I think this is less weird than Hot Pockets, or uh, less weird than Pop Tarts. <laughs> okay. Well, Fair I mean, enough. I'm just saying, I don't know anyone that sits down and eats, like, a ton of Pop-Tarts while they're playing games, but I know plenty of people that'll sit down with, like, a bowl full of yeah, okay. pizza. Yeah, I see what you mean. I see what you're coming from there. Yeah, that is odd. Anyways, uh, I just wanted to ask that question to get out of the way. It was something that I noticed that there just seemed to be a lot of... Flack. Flack for, the, like, an unusual amount. Like, I, I get the typical, like, des- grumbling that Destiny's catering to Red Bull and that you have to buy... 15 hot pocket boxes to get this exclusive skin but just something about this specific promotion really set people the 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 internet hive mind as it were off a little bit and i was kind of wanting to get down to the core of it and i think it might be because it's wb and the other things that have been going on shadow of mordor or shadow of war that's the only thing i can think of get your pizza rolls and win a xbox one s bundle with the fact that you can get in-game gold from the packs, is that? I'm pretty sure that's still technically paying to win because you have to pay for pizza so you can get in-game loot. Uh, keep an eye out for on pack codes you can submit to unlock in-game gold. So yeah, this uh, uh it is what it is. It is. Uh, I just want to get it out of the way before we get right into the big news of the week. And Dave, why don't you go ahead and start us off with what is arguably the biggest story that dropped last week. Actually, uh, well, like know, yesterday or the day before. It's very recent. Do you know who Mark Laidlaw is? I absolutely know who Mark Laidlaw is, but why don't you explain it to those watching? All right, so for those who don't know who Mark Laidlaw is, he is formerly a Valve and a Half-Life writer. One of the major Half-Life writers. He wrote a lot. He was involved in one, two episodes, one and two. Like, he's been there, done that, hung The out entire for thing, all I think, too. is his brainchild, actually. I'm not positive on that. If someone could correct me. He's the guy. Um, now, we've discussed several times that everybody that put together those games that you love, Half-Life, Half-Life 2, Episode 1, and Episode 2, they don't work for Valve anymore. They're all fucking gone, and they've been gone for a while. We've been slowly talking about every story as another one of them leaves, another one of them leaves. Like, the Half-Life team is is gone. It's, yeah, it's been scattered to the four fractured. fucking winds. Mark yeah, Ledlaw, yeah. I think, is retired at this point. I think he's actually retired. However, in a recent blog post, Mark Laidlaw has posted one of, if not the, plot to Half-Life 2 Episode 3. Um, we're not going to get into details on exactly what it talks about, because, I mean, if you haven't played Half-Life 2, you fucking should. It's amazing. Um, Half-Life episodes 1 and 2. I, I get trouble because, you know, you have 1 and 2, and then episodes 1 and 2. There's no quick yeah. way to say those. Because um, no. they don't like the number 3. Uh. But yeah, he, he goes through a whole storyline of what the third game could have been to finish out the uh, episode 2 saga, however you want to call it. And people are pissed. Right. Now, I have the, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd kind of figure that a lot of people would be happy, like, oh shit, man, I get a little bit of closure to this game series that I fucking love, that I know is dead to rights, that no one is going to put anything out there. But instead, this has just put fuel in the fire for pure, unadulterated Valve hatred. And people are coming out of the woodwork to just scream and berate and be pissed off at Valve. And a lot of that anger is going straight to Dota 2. Before we get into that, I do have Mark Laidlaw's blog post up here. As you can see, it says Epistol 3. He kind of wrote it in, uh, not code, but he changed all the proper names around. Uh, but oh, yeah. The, uh, the gist of what is on here is obvious. Additionally, he did hint at this might be only one of many scripts that were laid out for Episode 3, if it ever eventually does come out. So 
if slash when Valver decides to release, it's very unlikely that this will be what happens. I think this is just the one that he was pushing the hardest. He's really hasn't mentioned much after this. It was a nice way to kind of give closure to it, though, like I said. But now let's go ahead and talk about the Dota outrage people are taking us out on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to interrupt you because you said something that needs to be corrected. Okay, okay. Not when, not if. Episode 3 is never going to happen. Well, there's no incentive for them to do it, right? Valve has zero reason to put that game together. And anything that comes out of any Valve team right now is going to be nothing like what made you love Half-Life in the first place. Again, that team is gone. Everybody that worked on that game is fucking out of the door. So no one's going to make a good Half-Life game, and no one has any reason to try. Any game that comes out, even if it was the greatest game that's come out this entire fucking millennium, will not be good enough. Yeah, I absolutely agree. The only smart play for them is to just let it go. They Leave should... it alone. They and should say that, though, right? As they piss off people. Yeah, they Shouldn't can say Shouldn't they it. come out and say, Half-Life is dead, we are not going to make another one, rather than slow jerk they keep doing? I mean, I feel like they said that when everybody left. No, they never officially said it. I want that. I want Gabe Newell to come out and say, we are never going to make a... Your dreams of Half-Life 3, or insert whatever here, like, clarify that this is not being developed. Like new, it is new blog unlikely post from, from but, yeah. the Gabin, dearest gamers... Just say so- fucking something rather than being silent and being coy about it. Because he keeps fucking teasing it every now and then. Every now and then, Gabe Newell makes a public appearance and someone inevitably asks about Half-Life fucking 3. And he goes, oh yeah, well, we'll see. And it's like, motherfucker, just say no. Well, people have reasons to keep staring at Valve. If yeah. they keep stringing it along. Um, much like another big company that we're not talking about. They like to do stupid, ridiculous bullshit so they can drum up publicity for themselves. Every single time someone says the word, like, HL3, or Half-Life 3, or the number fucking 3, there's an entire rant on the internet devoted to the, the concept that it could potentially exist on some level. It's well, a fucking I, meme. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, and back to what we were talking about, people are now pissed. All the goodwill Valve has built up over the years, the PC Master Race jokes and everything like that, over the past year and a half... Between bullshit like this, their inability to make a good uh, another single player game, rather since fucking Portal 2, which was 10 years ago, to the green the Steam Greenlight bullshit now turned into Steam Direct, which really hasn't solved anything, to the rampant quasi illegal Counter Strike Go skin gambling bullshit that they keep going. Oh, we didn't know about bullshit. You knew all hey, about it. Hey, remember when you could keep Steam gifts in your library? Because I yeah. fucking do. I I recently had the issue of buying someone a gift when there was a Steam sale, and they didn't accept it right away. And Steam said, hey, by the way, no one claimed that. You're not allowed to hold on to it, so we've refunded you the money that you paid while it was on sale and took the key away. And I can't rebuy it because it's not fucking on sale anymore. Yeah, fuck that. Uh, People are pissed, and they are venting their frustrations out on Dota, which is their biggest game they have right now. Uh, David, what is the review currently at for Dota? The review score. Uh, right this second, Dota 2 is sitting at a... Wait, where's the actual number? Oh, it's 68 now. It's actually dropped. No. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's, it's dropped. Now, I don't want to say significantly, but we have to think about the numbers. Dota 2 is a game that normally sits, what, 72, 73, 74, somewhere in the review scores on Steam? Overall review score with uh, three quarters of a million people writing in is at 89%. Recent, which is the past 30 days, is 16,000 reviews, and it's dropped it to 68%. But we're talking big numbers. That's a pretty significant drop. Yeah, people are fucking pissed. A lot of people are going on there and saying that Dota 2 killed Valve's like single-player intentions, uh, killed their creative drive, that Dota is responsible for killing Half-Life 3, yada yada. I'm, um, I'm looking on their one uh, thing of note, forum page right that, now, by the way. That we have to talk about is the fact that you're all idiots. Now, don't get me wrong. The fact that Half-Life 3 doesn't exist is one of the things that makes me the angriest in this world. 
But Dota, Defense of the Ancients, is a goddamn mod that was put together by a team of people that happened to be Valve fans that had nothing to fucking do with Valve. As a yeah, matter of Warcraft, fact, Warcraft Valve is where gave those from. dudes some money so they could put together Dota 2. And they're still a little independent team that don't work on any actual Valve games. So I'm on their you fucking uh, morons. I'm on their forums right now. Let's I see. I get I get that you're mad, but why are you just yelling at Dota? Dota why 2 don't reviews you install going GOG from and stop fucking downloading Steam games. Positive to mixed, Half Life 3 dot 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 to all the Half Life 3 negative juice reviews. Uh, let's break Dota 2 down so they don't care about us. Let's go to second page here. Uh, Dota, uh, everything. Okay, it seems like the actual forums aren't as bad. There's some Russian in there that I can't quite understand because, well, I don't speak Russian. Uh, but yeah, people are pissed, and this is what they're venting at because they feel that the success of Dota 2 is what took them all away from making single player games. But, like you were saying, it's not Dota 2 that made that happen. Steam Although is what made that happen. Their reviews seem to seem to show it that way, and I get it. You need something to you need something to yell at, but it's it's just weird that you're taking it all out on a game that wasn't even put together by the main Valve team. Well, it's or, not even you know, there's not a main Valve team, and the Half Life team doesn't exist. So it's not even it's Dota been... Two. That's the problem here. It's Steam. That's the problem. Yeah, Steam but, became I mean, I guess, so I guess successful. There's no Steam review for Steam itself. Steam became so successful. That there's no point in ever making anything else again when you can just keep updating Steam. Yeah. But they make so much money hand over fist, they have no reason to make any video games. No, not at all. Uh, and that that's ultimately why you don't have Half-Life 3. Because here's the fun thing. You, you want to get into this? Because I want to. we're going to talk about it. Yeah, go ahead. Rant, rant away, brother. Once you're done, I'll go ahead and move on to the next topic. So, Half-Life 3, while if it had come out years ago, could have been the greatest game of all time and probably my favorite game remember that this is current day valve 2017 valve take a minute and really think about what that means what valve does right now on a daily basis for all the games that they support if half light Ep episode 3 were to come out tomorrow you know what it would have a goddamn season pass it would have hats it would have in-game dlc it'd have a marketplace fucking the g-man would come out and try and sell you his fucking suit they don't give a shit. They just want your money. Time to buy this loot box player. Or something along it, those lines. It's just not going to happen. And if it does, it will be the worst fucking game you've ever played. Yeah. Uh, I can't really think of much that makes me more upset than I, that. I think you're angrier over this than I am at this point. I think I, a look, long time I ago... Really am. I, I accepted that that this is just how it is now. But you seem like I like Half Life Two means a lot to me, but it means way fucking more to you. Oh yeah, I mean that game that game hit me at like a prime time. Like I played the first one, and I loved the first game, but I was still fairly young. So like I was in high school when I played Half Life Two. Yeah, I mean requirement in chat makes a good point. The fucking hat system from T Fortress Classic. That, that's um, what would be in Half-Life somewhere. Yeah, there, there'd be ha hats all over the fucking place. Get uh, your hats on. Anyways, I think we've gone hard enough get, on Valve for the get, moment. Get fake head crabs that you put on so that you confuse the other head crabs. But you have to pay $3 for them. Yeah, instead of hats, that would be head crabs, wouldn't they? It's fucking dumb. And the fact that we were able to... Yeah, and uh, that head crabs like themselves would wear mini hats. I don't like it. I don't like it. Well, I'm really upset. I did give myself a pretty great Halloween idea. What is that? It's just like a like a foam head crab, but then like with different TF2 hats on it. <laughs> just start stacking them up like Russian dolls. Yeah. Anyways, Valve is dead. Their goodwill is being quickly cashed in. Whoa, whoa, whoa uh, they're not dead. <laughs> the old they have, Valve. They have so much fucking money. But the yeah, the old Valve, Valve you know and love, is the one dead. that makes video games. They're super fucking dead. Uh, and they're quickly losing all their good wolf gamers. So and Gavin, it's, Gavin's gonna go ahead and cry himself to sleep in his hundreds of millions of dollars. It'll tonight. be interesting to see what happens with them in the next five years. So as more and more people start if, getting. If any off actual with competitor them. comes out, like if EA just gets their shit all the way together and Origin becomes just amazing, that'd be cool. Who knows? There's there's some competition or if GOG 
puts cloud saves and like decent multiplayer in their system, there's an idea. Or here's the scary thing, Valve. Tencent is bigger than you. Tencent's bigger than everyone. And they're coming. <laughs> just get that out of the way. Their client is nationwide now, and all they need is rudimentary customer support, and they're better than you. Yeah. Keep in mind, this is a company that's in China, and if I can actually like call them, if they have like a hotline, and there's a dude that speaks to me, even if I can barely understand him, that's fucking better than Valve's customer service. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I didn't even think about Tencent possibly getting in all this. That They, they could. Now is their time. So, um, Tencent. There yo, was a there was a quick uh, there's a quick story that I ended up cutting about Tencent joining with the NFL to make like mobile phone games over in China or some shit like that. So they're big. They're everywhere. You need to be watching out for Tencent. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next story that I have right here. It's just a bunch of quick announcements, small takes from Gamescom dealing specifically with Blizzard. Uh, not going to get too in depth with any of these. I just want to go over them all real quick. One, World of Warcraft has its new 7.3 patch dropping tomorrow. This seems to be the last big content uh, update before. You know, this is this is like the end of the expansion, as it were. 7.3 is the start of the final chapter of Legion. At least it seems that way. It's probably going to start wrapping up all the storylines with the raid coming out. Likely 11 weeks from now, they tend to release these big patches every 77 days, I believe. That, uh, I think it's going to be the end of Legion. Uh, they will likely, in my opinion, announce a new expansion at BlizzCon. And the, the hype train for what is coming next will start from then. They'll probably have one more patch, like a 7.4, to tie into whatever the next expansion is going to be. Do you have any speculation on that? Where uh, it could go? What it could be? Yeah. More pandas, uh, less I, pandas. There, there's some rumors out there that it might deal with uh, cool tourists, I think, is the, 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 the Navy nation that's kind of disappeared for a while. Jaina's homeland, and she's gone AWOL for this expansion because she got pissed off at a bunch of things that happened. It's going to probably deal with the old gods, which is like the last big threat that's left. I and... thought that uh, most recent Heroes of the Storm video just confirmed that Jaina was a dreadlord. Was I just... <laughs> That's hard. Okay, you're getting it confused with Hearthstone. Hearthstone had an expansion that came out <laughs> that dealt with all, what if all the heroes became Death Knights or some shit? You never know. And going along with that, at Gamescom, fucking Blizzard released this trailer that might as well have been a goddamn Disney-level qual- movie quality. It's Dude, this we, we said that musical since the original singing, Overwatch trailer. Yeah, it's this musical singing like out of Beauty and the Beast. I recommend taking a look at it even if you hate Hearthstone. Blizzard also released Rise and Shine. This is the May Overwatch origin story and it is fucking sad. Like unbelievably sad. And I don't know what you're talking about. Dude, I was crying tears of joy. <laughs> what? <laughs> May could be the bay of hell for all I care. <laughs> oh, you just hate you because you hate May. Yeah. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, on Overwatch News still, they also released a trailer for Junkertown, which is the Australian Outback-themed map that kind of looks like Barter Town from Mad Max. I was just going to say, who runs Junkertown? But you may, you just beat me to the uh, punch. Baster Master. Ba- Baster <laughs> Master. Baster Master. <laughs> Baster Master. <laughs> <laughs> I tried I tried switching the, the, the consonants around to do something clever and it turns the out it doesn't blast, matter. It's the same master? thing either way. Blaster master, but switch the bla and the ma around. It's the same goddamn thing. So you can see where I get Master Blaster instead of ma- whatever. Who fucking cares? Anyways, uh whole bunch of Blizzard GameCom stuff come out, but you gotta imagine their big guns are being saved for BlizzCon it's, it's later this year. That's Anyways, it's gonna happen. Another thing that's going to happen that's going to be hitting PC, PS4, and Vita. Vita has a game announcement. Can you believe it? I know. In February of next year. What fucking year is this? Okay, the biggest part of this story is the fact that this is actually confirmation that Vita is getting a game next year. (laughs) And the game it's getting is the Secret of Mana remake. Uh, Confirmed. Secret of Mana is getting remade into 3D. The game that came out on Super Nintendo in 1993. Definitely the most popular Mana title. And probably one of the more famous RPGs that doesn't start with Final. Yeah, um, or Dragon. 
Or Dragon, yeah. Secret of Mana, very good game. Uh, I legitimately owned that on Super Nintendo. I think I can go find a cartridge somewhere. Super fun. But for me, the biggest part of this story is not the fact that Secret of Mana is finally coming back. Not the fact that they picked Secret of Mana over, like, Chrono Trigger or Chrono Cross to remaster. No. It's the fact that it's 2017, and you are now able to both pre-order Secret of Mana to get bonus content, and they've confirmed there's DLC. Well, I didn't know that. Hold on, let me let me look down here on the pre-purchase software. There is a specific reason why I needed to talk about this, and it's the fact that I'm angry about it. <laughs> pre-purchase to receive three special DLC items, including the Moogle Cert, two, a Tiger Two-Piece, and the Tiger Suit, plus a custom downloadable wallpaper. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Um... Dear wow. Squeenix, you poor, pathetic bastards that are obviously running out of money in a hurry. Stop fucking doing this! Um, I'm not. I'm not going to touch That's this game. So with bad. I'm just so. I'm so done with this shit. Well, let, let me go if back you to that. Bring paper something from my childhood. Just bring it to me. Let me. Let me enjoy it. Don't taint it with all this new level shit. It's the same complaint. Well, it's funny. It's the same complaint I had of what would happen if Half Life Three were to show up, where it would be fucking horrible because we chock full of Michael transactions and pre-order bonuses and all this other bullshit. Secret of Mana. One of the greatest games of the 90s, one of the greatest RPGs of all time, gets that. What kind of drives me nuts is I'm looking at these Enhanced for a New World 3D Remake stuff, and I look at this and I go, I, I like the, the 2D sprites better for Super Nintendo. Like, like right here, I have a picture of the boy, because if I recall, it actually doesn't have a name. Uh, he's all plastic and shit. It looks... It looks like when they did the Final Fantasy remakes for the 3DS, how they kind of chibified them and they made them look really childish. Now, Secret of Mana was always a very bright, colorful game, and th th this matches a little bit closer, at least. But still, I don't like that plastic look. It bothers me. No, there will be no hats requirement. No. That Valve has a copyright on hat and all hat-related items. <laughs> Hats and hat-related items. Fantastic. In fact, if, um, you notice, if you notice, not even the Mario Odyssey uh, trailer calls it a hat. They're caps. That's true. Currently being sued by the Thizda as we speak. Right this second. Anyways, next story. Speaking of Nintendo, the N Nintendo has uh, oh, fallen and, and... off the wagon. In what can only be considered a train of related topics. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Nintendo's Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle will have post-launch DLC, including a season pass. Now, this is one of those things that we... This isn't new from Nintendo. They've definitely been hitting the season pass lately a lot. Think about the recent Zelda season pass... Stuff they've done for Mario Kart when it comes to DLC. Fire Emblem's been a hotbed of this for a while. But something about Nintendo always felt like, eh, they're doing it, but they're just doing it to be keeping up with the Joneses. It never really seemed fully committed to it for some reason. Well, now they are. And, of course, it turns out just to team up with Ubisoft is what kind of fully taints the well on this one. Uh, season Pass owners will have access to new solo challenges and co-op maps this fall, along with new story content in 2018. The Season Pass will be available on August 29th for $19.99. No details on exactly what's in this other than, hey, it's going to be more maps and solo challenges. But they don't tell us how many, how long they're going to last. What... It's like the classic bullshitty version of a Season Pass. Yeah, hey, this is trust pay us, us some territory. extra money when you buy your game, and we'll get you some amount of content down the line. We don't know what the fuck it is. We haven't thought about it. And we have half the team that's supposed to be finishing the game working on it right now. Yeah. Here's what's so fucking annoying about season passes, too, is they say all this shit, but then they release other things Go, no, that's not part of the season pass. Yeah. What the fuck did I buy the season pass for? Um, it's easy. I can answer that for you. Okay. Because you're an idiot. <laughs> Fair enough. I fucking hate this trust us there'll be good stuff in it mentality when it comes to DLC that's not even likely being made yet. And if it is made, why is it in the final fucking game? That's When it comes to DLC, there's one of two options, right? One, it's either stuff that was cut from the final game because it didn't really impact the final game at all, in which case 
why should I go out of the way and buy it separately anyways? Or two, I forgot where my fucking train of thought was going on this because I'm so flustered or two, right now. It's content that the developers, upon releasing the game, decided that they would like to add based on community feedback or the fact that they think that there needs to be a little bit more story. No. Now, while that's not the case for most publishers, I am specifically talking about CD Projekt Red and how we should continue to give them money. <laughs> a lot of their DLC was free. Yeah. The stuff that was And the stuff that wasn't free content. was as big as the whole game originally. Uh, big as some games. I'm not going to say big as the whole game, because the whole game itself took me like 130 hours to beat. But right, they're like 30-hour chunks of game added in. They're substantial. Uh, they're meaty. This shit is just greedy. Extra caps. Extra and, sci-fi guns. I mean, look, extra look, rabid skins. Look at my fucking Twitter handle. I fucking love making as much as you can and all that shit. But goddamn, this just reeks of avarice. Stop buying shit sight unseen. Stop pre-ordering. Stop giving developers and publishers money on the promise of it will be good. But, but, I mean, it, how, with, how many more times can we hammer content, this exact point home? And like with done? all these legendary editions and the fact that like, remember when a collector's edition was exactly that? It was a collector's edition. They only made a few of them and they were actually worth some amount here's of money. A thousand and now, here's every, a thousand copies of insert whatever here. And now every single collector's edition is just the base game, but it's $100 and comes with some like kitschy loot crate level bullshit in it and you'll be able to Here's find it for just as much as the game is that's worth almost nothing and you'll find it for just as much as the game is stacked up on the shelves of GameStop for 30 bucks in 3 months yep I keep saying we've hit saturation but obviously it's not true no I think we have it, I think it, we have hit saturation, and I think it's starting to affect things, which is why you started to see the bigger companies that have been doing it while, for like EA and Activision, moving away from things like terms like season pass and rolling out with what the new plague upon this industry is, the loot box. Oh, God, the loot box. That's where we're I'm at looking now. looking squarely at you, Overwatch. Nintendo and your has, eighteen thousand hours of playtime to unlock all the content. <laughs> Nintendo is, as always, just a step behind everyone else when it comes to this shit, especially the online stuff. They're just now starting to embrace the season pass and the online bullshit. Well, luckily, they have their whole own market covered of being their own special branded dicks. Yeah, well, that comes with physical product, which. We're not going to get into. Anyways, uh, why don't you go ahead and leave something to the next story there, David. <laughs> well, we've been talking about all these things that are going to happen. Let's talk about something that won't. <laughs> <laughs> in a recent story by Game Reactor, um, the head of marketing for Xbox, Aaron Greenberg, was in Kelowna. Is that how you say that? Cologne. Cologne. During Gamescon, talking about crossplay with Sony. Uh, he was actually asked, hey, are you guys still trying to get cross-play compatibility with the PlayStation and Xbox going? And he said, quote, absolutely, yeah. We're talking to Sony about cross-play. We do partner with them on Minecraft, and of course we'd like to enable them to be part of that, you know, one community to unite gamers. So we're talking to them, and we're hopeful that they'll be supportive of it, end quote. Unfortunately, this is again, like we've talked about, the thing that the guys in second place say. Sony has really just the king of the market right now. Or the market share, I should say. Yeah, this this and benefits no, Sony in no way at all. Yeah, they have no reason to to throw in crossplay into their stuff because they can just force people to buy it on PlayStation instead. Now, while it'd be really really awesome if they just let go a little bit of that Sony hubris and just allowed this to happen so people could be happier, I mean, I'd be all for it. I just don't, I just don't see it happening. No. At least until they get too big for the britches, screw some shit up, and lose the next console cycle war. And then they'll be the ones begging for crossplay. Yeah, and if if it was last gen, for example, Xbox 360 versus PlayStation 3, and Sony was going, "Hey, we'd like to do crossplay," Microsoft wouldn't have said yes. No, yeah. no. This this is something that the person in second place says to get goodwill to have people go, oh, "Fuck you, first place." Uh, and Sony are not the bad guys in this. Sony, why would they? They 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 gain literally nothing by doing crossplay yeah. at all. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, it would be nice to eventually be able to play with everyone on every system. I won't be able to play PUBG on PC with people on console. That sounds like a tremendous amount of fun. <laughs> Uh, or yeah, Overwatch. I mean, that does or... sound pretty good. Are you just talking about dominating console yeah, kids? Because they're exactly. all <laughs> controllers. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm getting at. That sounds great. Uh, but it's just not going to happen. Sorry, guys. No way now. Anyways, next story. Let's talk about something really good. This is something good that devs did. And uh, special shout out to the Polish team of Acid Wizard Studios for doing this. They put out their recently released game, Darkwood, on the Pirate Bay. Just DRM-free, fucking torn it, knock yourself out. There's yeah. a big imager post talking about who Acid Wizard Games is, and they go on about how they were making Darkwood, and they really underestimated or oh, underestimated how much time this is going to take, and they kept fucking having to push back dates, and they missed all their milestones. But the game finally came out, and the game is fun. It's a top-down, kind of procedurally generated survival horror with some crafting mechanics involved. I d recommend, if you like scary games, take a look at it on It's also, on uh, I'd like to point out, a survival horror without jump scares. They like spooky games, but they like games that actually are spooky and have good atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, um, there is some jump scare in there, but it definitely doesn't rely on them. That, that, that's what I meant. They're not going for like a, just a basic jump scare game. Uh, but anyways, the point is, they had two concerns. One... They were like, oh, man, we hate the fact that people might be too scared to buy our game and aren't buying it and trying it because they don't want to spend 15 or 20 or however much it is right now on a game only to be able to play it because how terrifying it is. And they're also like, and we just don't like the idea of people not being able to afford our game. So they Well, the other, the other thing, though, that they did mention is the fact that they're constantly getting like heckled by people. To try and get free keys, like, oh, I'm a YouTuber, yeah. or I'm a streamer, or I'm so-and-so, and you should give me a free copy of your game. And they know that half of those are just going to end up on a key reseller site, and that it's all bullshit, and they just don't want to deal with it. They don't want their game no. to be resold or stolen so that someone else can make a profit. So, so here's the whole game for free. Yep, and a quote from them uh, themselves. If you don't have the money and want to play the game, we have a safe torrent on the Pirate Bay of the latest version of Darkwood, which is the 1.0 Hotfix 3 patch. Completely DRM free. There's no catch, no added pirate hats for a character or anything like that. Which was uh, a reference, if I recall, I want to say it was, uh, oh, I don't remember what game it was, but like there was something in there that lets you know that you pirated it, and like it gives you eye patches and shit for doing it. It's kind of funny. We have just one request. If you like Darkwood and want to continue making games, consider buying it in the future, maybe on sale through Steam or Good Old Game or Hundred Bundle, but please, please don't buy it through any key reselling site. By doing that, you're just feeding the cancer that is leeching off this industry. By that, they mean G2A. Fuck G2A. But good yeah, on these fuck, guys. Fuck, fuck G2A. I fucking love this. I want to give these guys an extra special shout out to Acid Wizard Studios and your fantastic game of Darkwood. I actually paid money for it myself. I'm digging it. I've been interested in this game since I first started about, I want to say, back in 2012? I thought it was 2014. Uh, yeah, maybe 2014. Wait, I thought when we first saw a video of it was like 2014. But maybe I'm wrong. It was a long time ago, but either way, I have been watching this game for a long time. I'm glad to see it finally coming out. I'm glad that it seems to be successful for you guys as well. I hope, wish you the best when it comes down to that stuff, and this is an awesome gesture. Because, as we all know, if someone is going to pirate something, Nintendo... They are going to do it anyways, regardless of how many things you may or may not restrict, how tight you try to control your games from appearing on, say, the virtual console. The more restrictive you are, the more justified, and there's a morality argument to be made that they are fine in going out and finding this stuff on your own. Nintendo. So, if you make a game, understand that putting all this bullshit DRM in it is just going to, more often than not, hamper the legitimate people who are buying it, and it does nothing to protect you anyways, because that shit is cracked hours after it comes out, if not before it even comes out. Yep. Had a tie in we, another we, rant we, there. We've talked about that a, a lot of a lot of times yeah. before. So, so yeah, good going to really get into it. David, go go uh, acid acid wizard studios. I do have to specifically mention that the name of that studio is amazing. 
it's 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 almost like the kinky wizards from uh, High Fidelity. I'm into it. Um, Why don't you go ahead and bring us home with the last news story there, David? Well, how about some rumors that were fueled by Target that there could be a Bethesda Game of Thrones game that's not actually a thing. No, it's not. There was happen. a Target. There's a Target webpage that was put up that said the following: Bethesda calling Game of Thrones, firing off speculation that Bethesda's new game would be set in the Vulcan TV universe. But ta- t- uh, Todd Howard, the CEO of Bethesda, the someone of something. I th- he yeah. owns uh, Bethesda. Well, he doesn't own. He is the, the head of Bethesda Game Studios. Cool. Anyway, Todd Howard, a high up in Bethesda, said the company turned down the chance to make Song of Ice and Fire game back in 2011, saying, "Hey, we wanted to do our own world. This is that's what we wanted to put out time, put our time into." In reference to Skyrim, and why would they go to the trouble to make a Game of Thrones game when they could just keep re-releasing Skyrim for every fucking console yeah. that comes out? So I got a couple things about this. Uh, as of two hours before this show went live, this web page was still up. I was going to bring it up to show, hey, it's still up, but of course they fucked me at the last minute and finally took it down. But the reason why I don't think this is going to happen is that this web page was up for day a couple days. I think it came out on Saturday. It was just now recently taken down on Monday here, which means no one at Bethesda thought it was important enough to go after Target over. Because if they actually were developing something for this, that shit would have been yanked less than an hour after it came out. And I think that alone is evidence enough that this game is not happening. So, anyone who is excited for the Skyrim Game of Thrones crossover or a Game of Thrones skin set in Skyrim or insert whatever here, that ain't happening. I, I mean, it could have happened, sure, but this is not... I'm pretty sure there's already mods like for Skyrim to play Game of Thrones. Anyways, uh, I just want to touch on that real quick. Don't believe that this is going to be a thing. It might be a thing later, but as of right now, I honestly don't think it is. Oh, and, I would like to point out that yes. I would not like the Skyrim Game of Thrones crossover. I don't think it would be a good fit for the universe. And if so, you yeah. do want an immersive, truly Game of Thrones experience, please play the Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 2. That is way more worth your time. Just throwing that out there. I really like Crusader Kings, so we have, we have to talk about any chance I can think of. David. Yes. If there was going to be a Bethesda-made Game of Thrones game, I highly doubt it would come out anytime soon. It'd more likely probably come out even after the show is wrapped up in 2018, so it would be looking like a 2019 release for that one. It's fucking two years from now if this game actually existed. Fuck that. I want to play something right now. What's coming out this week? I do this week? Well, you can play the game that we're oh so excited for that's got DLC and a season pass, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle for the Switch. Or, more importantly, Switch players, or people that own one, you have a new game this week. Congratulations, now you're up to four. No, 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 I'm going I'm to call you on your shit right there. Since the Switch <laughs> has been out, they've actually had a shit ton of really good fucking releases, Consider this system's only like four or five months old. All right, all right, all right. Zelda, Mario Kart, yes, Mario Kart's a fucking re-release on the Wii U, but no one played it on the Wii U, so it might as well be a new game. Uh, Splatoon, Mario Rabbids, that fucking ARMS game is actually really goddamn fun. As far as the launch console goes, they are... The Switch is legitimately has a good library coming out this year, and it's not even a year old yet. Okay, I'm sorry I was off by one, Nintendo fans. <laughs> Thanks for listing the five Switch games. Just, uh, also just coming saying, out this it's week, better than the PlayStation 4 library was when it first launched in its first year. That's true, and it's and it's still better, uh, and it's already it's better, better than the Xbox 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 library five years <laughs> on or whatever when that fucking console came out. Oh, uh, that's funny. Sorry, I'm just still salty. At you're Nintendo. salty over the Super Nintendo Classic. Let's be honest here. We're not going to get into it, but that's what you're salty over. No reason to talk about that. Okay. Uh, also coming out this week, XCOM 2, War of the Chosen for Xbox One? Isn't that coming for more things? Yeah, it's uh, also coming... I, I don't... Why does it say Xbox One? I, it's PC. Yeah, okay, anyway. I don't know why that says Xbox One. That's my fault. This is PC. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's the expansion to the 2016 game. Playing XCOM 2. the moment we log off. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, it has a, uh, some new content to the fight against the Advent. There's, I think, three additional factions. Um, there's a new enemy known as the Chosen. New hero classes, new enemies, new missions, new environments, more depth in the gameplay, all kinds of shit. 
if you Rex played uh, Enemy Within, Enemy Unknown's expansion, I suspect it'll be a lot along those lines. There is some controversy about this because apparently there are fixes in the expansion that fix problems with the, with the original base game, but they're not releasing those fixes for the original base game. So if like you happen to have... Attached. Yeah. If you happen to have one of those problems that the base game had, then you should buy the expansion is what they're telling you. Interesting. That's a bold strategy. We'll see how it works out for him. But yeah, if you want the darker version of Mario and Rabbids, you should pick up the XCOM 2 expansion. Because they have it's, the it's, it's fucking hilarious that both of those games are coming out on the same day. I, I'm probably going to buy Mario and Rabbids, though. It's getting solid reviews. It's getting like 8.5s, 8s, 7.5s. I'm going to go ahead and just commit to what I said months ago. I guarantee that game would be better if they partnered with anybody but the fucking Rabbids. Special exception of the Minions, because it's the same fucking thing. Um, also coming out this week, Absolver for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Uh, this is a martial arts-focused action role-playing game developed by Slow, Ca Slow Clap. They're an indie game developer, and the game is actually published by Devolver Digital. Love those we're, guys. We're fans of those kids, so they tend to put their money behind some cool stuff. Um, players control like different warrior characters who fight other players, computer-controlled characters. It's... It's kind of like a fighting game, but not exactly because you customize the way you fight with like a combat deck with each card assigned to a move. So you get extra cards, more equipment, weapons by playing through the game. It looks fairly cool. It's People got keep like... saying Dark Souls with this game. I'm like, no, stop fucking comparing everything to Dark Souls. This has if, this really doesn't if, have anything to do with it. If that. it's mildly difficult, everyone says it's Dark Souls. Yeah. If it's got a learning curve, everyone says it's Dark Souls. Guess what? Some shit's not Dark Souls. We don't need to talk about it. Also coming out this week, E7, a game that came out eight years ago on the PSP, is now on Steam. Excite! I, I own this game for PSP. I can go find it. Um, it came out in North America and Actually, I'm sorry, 2010 for PSP in America, 2009 for Japan. It's the seventh game in the E series, which is a kind of classic RPG with some action style combat thrown in i actually like the east games i think e7 is very fun so if you're looking for a more traditional styled um rpg it's, game it's been around forever too like i think hey. the first one came out like in the mid 80s yeah east east 3 was on super nintendo and yeah. that game is fantastic I uh, also coming out this week is abduction for ps4 uh this is the adventure video game by by cyan worlds which is considered to be the spiritual successor to mist and riven um this game was kickstarted. It did really well in October of 2013. It actually came out in 2016 for PC. Uh, it has a Mac version. It has a, a Vive and an Oculus version. And it's actually going to be supported by PlayStation VR. It so, is a... I, I played this on PC. It is very true to form to the old style Myst games. Old uh, school old school adventure, click, exploration, puzzle solving right. game. Robin and Rand Miller, the guys who are the brain... Trust at Sign Games were very heavily involved in this, uh, and it looks amazing in VR. It really does. I kind of want to take a look at what it looks good, like. Period. I actually think this game looks gorgeous. Yeah, it, uh, it's it's a good game. Uh, and if the you like that style. pretty great. The player character is abducted from Earth by aliens and transported to like a different alien world, and you're trying to find your way home, which I think is a perfect use for the old school adventure mechanics. Because if you're trapped in like an alien landscape you have no idea what the fuck anything is so yeah. it's like it, is this a key is this a candle i don't even know what the hell i'm looking at and it reminds me that... a lot of those uh i can't remember the company that made them but it was like out of this world or another world if you live in europe and uh, flashback those 2d style games where it's just like all right you're plucked in from one world and put into this strange place go explore it doesn't really tell you anything it just kind of dumps you into the world I just, I, I'm excited to see it because I think uh, the old school styled adventure games are the perfect fit for VR. They really are. Yes. I mean, looking around a room, um, you don't, you're not really worried about like snap movement decision making because that's something they haven't quite figured out in pretty much every damn game that's playable with VR. Like the movement to interaction mechanics are a little weird, I think. Um, but with old school adventure games, you're just picking stuff up, examining it, looking for clues, looking all over a room, then going into the next room. And if you think of the old school mechanic, like you just you are in a room, you click over there, and then it loads the next room, and there wasn't any like movement animation or anything really there, like that. There is a free roam 
in this game, but you can also choose to play it in that old school style. But this is old fucking school adventure games. This isn't like the modern like Telltale stuff where you get this to pick from gonna two hold your hand. This is you better have a notepad and a pen nearby and start scribbling some shit. Yep. What else, David? Tons of fun for a lot of people. Uh, also coming out this week, Pillars of Eternity Complete Edition for Xbox One and PS4. Um, it's all game. It's, yeah, it's it's all of Pillars of Eternity, including the White March Parts 1 and 2. It's got all the same character creation options, Epic Universe, uh, new UI controls designed from the ground up for the consoles. So, I mean, if you need some Pillars of Eternity, which, uh, again, an example of a kind of retro-styled RPG, but this is a CRPG. Yeah, like think Baldur's Gate, or Planescape. Yep. And, yeah, there you go. Also coming out this week, ReCore Definitive Edition, a, another fancy edition of a game that came out a little while ago. The game was originally released in 2016. It's an action-adventure video... I'm sorry, it's an action-adventure platforming game with Fry Concept, Armature Studio. Wasn't this one of Kenji and Afude's titles he was making alongside Mighty Number no. 9? Yes, he was working on it. Um... You play as a character who volunteers for a utopian colony of Far Eden. You wake up in after like cryo sleep. It's forgettable, and is what everything I would say everything is. goes bad, and you you got robot companions, it and there's is new companions a now, and competent platformer, but nothing I don't know, special. I don't, I don't know, know why, why there's why a they definitive have edition. Yeah, that came that's out exactly Xbox. what I was about to say. There's no reason this game exists. Well, not the original. This this special version, whatever. Uh, also coming out this week. Super Smash Warriors, otherwise known as Warriors All-Stars, from Koei Tecmo. If you don't know who that is, they're the guys that make the Dynasty Warriors, Samurai Warriors, Neo All Genesis, the Musu Evangelion games. Warriors, whatever the fuck Warriors game you can think of. I'll play the they put it together. Evangelion Warriors. <laughs> they, they play mostly the same with different characters, slightly changed mechanics. You know, And this is like their, their amalgamation where they take... 30 different playable characters, 27 heroes spawning 13 different series that were put together by Koei Tecmo, and three original characters playing this weird story where they all got thrown into one universe for no reason. Um, yeah, and they're just all they're just all together. You joke about Ava heroes, but if you like the Musu games, that Attack on Titan game is actually pretty fucking fun. Yeah. But you have to like the Musu games. I know the, the joke is, oh, it's the same fucking thing every year. Well, yeah, it is. It so is Madden. Um, this game plays the most like Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires, and the big thing is since these characters are coming from so many different games, a lot of the mechanics were changed on an individual character, basic, to try and get the game to play the same. Like, the Samurai Warriors characters were given, like, an extra attack in their base combo so that they feel like everybody else. So no one should really feel very far behind, and they should all probably play pretty similar. Oh, but... what was that fighting game that did not do that and it fucked everything up? Um, was it Street Fighter X Tekken? It was something that took, like, five different fighting games and put them all in one, but the problem was is that they didn't add any of... They didn't change any of the characters around. So, let's say, for example, one fighting game had a parry and another didn't. That means if it was a match between those two characters from those two fighting games, one person could parry everything thrown at them, but the other person couldn't parry anything. Yep. Is that, was that Street Fighter Cross Tekken? Uh, I don't know. I just remember that game had issues. PlayStation no. 2 era. Can't remember what it was called. Oh. Well, that's not that's not then. Uh, also coming out, probably the biggest thing that we need to talk about for sure: Windjammers. Yes, Windjammers, a game that was originally released for the Neo Geo arcade system in 1994, is coming out for PS4. This was kind <laughs> of announced as a joke. It kind of was. This game's called Flying Power Disc in Japan. It is a fast-paced, like disc golf style video game except for you're more or less playing pong with like frisbees and there's various characters with various super moves there's different ways to throw the disc at each other um it's yeah it's it's like a video game version of like pong or air hockey or or just fucking like yeah with with disc golf discs it's so funny it's so 90s looking fantastic genius great release game of the year uh, also coming out this week, um, everybody's golf for PS4. The, Hot Shots Golf, baby. Yeah, it's Hot Shots Golf, the new one. Those games were rad on the PlayStation. They were rad on the PlayStation 2. Um, I didn't play any on the PlayStation 3, but I'm willing to bet this one's good too. It's just, it's it's a more fun version of, of the golf games, and it doesn't have Tiger Woods on the front because he's not allowed to be on video games anymore. 
<laughs> yeah, well, when you get arrested for having like an entire pharmacy in your blood system, they tend to frown upon that. Luckily, these are all cartoon characters, so they're not going to have all these drugs in them. Um, also hit this week the Destiny 2 beta for PC. Uh, Life is Strange Before the Storm, Episode 1 for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. This is obviously the precursor to Life is Strange. Um, notably missing the voice actress who originally voiced the character because of the writer's strike. Uh, I, I forgot their title. SAG AFTRA writer, uh, SAG act, the SAG AFTRA vo uh, voice actors guild. Thank you. Something along those lines. Those those kids are, are all striking, so this does not have the same uh, voice actress in it. But um, should be pretty solid. The no funny real word on not, that voice actor strike lately, by the way. It's not uh, actually made by the original Life is Strange team, and this is made by a secondary team. Uh, though they're big fans of it, and they were given permission and go ahead, so yeah. we'll see how it Don't looks. Don't Nod themselves are actually working on Life is Strange 2, I believe. Correct. Uh, finally, coming out this week, another game that came out quite a while ago, Resident Evil Revelations, the old 3DS game from 2012. It already has a sequel that came out, but we're getting the first one for Xbox One and PS4. There was an HD remake of this that hit Steam, PS3, and Xbox 360 a couple of years ago, I want to say. And it basically is it's another Resident Evil game. It takes place in between 4 and 5. You play as Jill and Chris Redfield, and you, are, you spend a lot of time on a boat. It's all right. <laughs> Uh, it it's, has a it lot awesome. of problems, it's fair, but it's it was not bad. awesome on 3DS. Like, when it came out, I was like, holy shit, there's a Resident Evil game for 3DS that actually plays decently well. Um, each new iteration of it, it it really starts to tell more and more that it was a game made for a handheld. So while it does look a little better, I don't think it necessarily plays as well as it should. And, I mean, I feel like it kind of shows. It, you can play it, though. It's still a fun game. It's got a good... Well, it's not some, only is it a handheld, it but it's a handheld that came out, like, what, five, six, seven years ago? Days ago. Good thing so you can only put an HD... What was that? Good thing they just released a new version of it. You know it. Anyways, I think that does it for new releases, and that will also do it for the show. This yeah. has been Game Points episode 102. Thank you for watching. We do stream here at Twitch TV slash Game Points every Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Watch us live if you can. Join in the conversation, much like we had a requirement earlier today. Questions, comments, concerns, if you have anything you want to bring up during the show, feel free to do so. If you can't make it live, uh, tune into our YouTube page. Just type in Game Points one word. We pop right up. Do the same there. Question, comment, all that good stuff. Regardless of where you're at, follow, subscribe, dislike, uh, leave comments. I do go through them all. Sometimes I reply, sometimes I don't. Uh, if you want to follow the show itself, you can do so on Twitter at GamePointsPC. You can follow myself at CapitalistPig21, and you can follow David over there at Palshife underscore Satori. I think that wraps things up. Without further ado, this has been GamePoints102. Until next week, we'll see you then. Something, something, something. I am totally distracted by this thing on my screen right now. And Sorry, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me... Are... Out of here. What'd you do?